Poppers are liquid inhalants occasionally sold as air fresheners or VHS cleaner. And many of us gay men sniff them. A survey found that 69% of gay men in Toronto, where I happen to live, have used poppers at least once, with a newer study finding that 1.5% of American adolescents use poppers irregardless of sexual orientation. Straight people are sniffing poppers too. The future is now. So what exactly is happening to your body when you sniff these chemicals and why are gay men huffing air freshener? Gay rights! One to three seconds after you sniff poppers and the physical effects have already set in as the chemicals go right into your bloodstream. Sniffing drugs causes chemicals to pass through the nasal cavity right into the bloodstream where they go to your heart and your brain first. This is why sniffing drugs can be so dangerous. When you drink or eat drugs, they get digested and absorbed into your blood through the GI tract, where they then go to the liver to be metabolized first. When you sniff something, it doesn't get to go to your liver to be metabolized. It goes right to your heart and your brain, which are V important organs. Your brain has an integral blood brain barrier. This is a membrane that only lets certain things in. Poppers cannot pass through your blood brain barrier, which is a very good thing, but they still have an effect on your brain. The chemical in poppers is known as isobutyl nitrite. And for all your org chem heads, the chemical looks like this. This chemical can affect your blood vessels. Normally, blood vessels maintain a state halfway between contraction and dilation, but neuronal or chemical stimuli can change this. For example, vasopressin is a natural hormone that constricts blood vessels. Histamine can vasodilate. Poppers, when sniffed, use their chemical properties to dilate blood vessels in your body. Now, the concept of sniffing nitrites was invented by this horny French guy in 1844. Not sure if he was horny, but he did kind of invent poppers. Gay rights! He found out that amyl nitrites could treat angina. Now, angina is a constriction of blood vessels around the heart, which causes a lot of pain. So what he got people to do in the late 1800s was literally pop the case of amyl nitrites, that's where the word pop comes from, huff the amyl nitrites, which would cause vasodilation around the heart and decrease the pain from the angina attack. Yes, these olden day people were huffing poppers. I said it now, I'll say it again, I said gay rights. But now back to modern day poppers, which are isobutyl nitrite, not amyl nitrite. 10 to 20 seconds after sniffing, and now the isobutyl nitrites have traveled through the nasal cavity to some cerebral vessels in the brain where they chemically cause vasodilation. Vasodilation of the cerebral vessels causes increased intracranial pressure that produces a euphoric high, leading to feelings of loosened inhibitions, warmth, and calm. 10 to 30 seconds after a huff huff and the isobutyl nitrites are now passing easily into your smooth muscle cells. Once in the smooth muscle cells, they activate enzymes that cause relaxation and vasodilation. Since there are smooth muscle cells in your throat, vagina, also known as vagine, and the anus, also known as anus, the vasodilation of these specific smooth muscle cells is why poppers are used to aid in sex. The vasodilation of the internal and external sphincters of the anus are one of the reasons why gay men use poppers. Because famously, us gay men like to have anal sex. Just one minute after sniffing the poppers and the euphoric feeling in your brain is gone and you now have a body with low blood pressure. Your heartbeat may start to increase to make up for the low blood pressure. People say that they feel very flush around their neck and face, they get headaches. It honestly doesn't sound that fun and this is only one minute later. Two to three minutes after sniffing and most of the biochemical effects are fully over. It all happens so fast. Some people now experience nausea, weakness, or even a yellow spot in front of their eyes, which are common symptoms of the low blood pressure strain your body is now under. I keep thinking about people watching this on YouTube and being like, what the heck is this gay guy talking about? Is he speaking gibberish? Is it dangerous? And sadly, there is not much research on the danger of this because like most of scientific history, the queer community is getting ignored. Whether it's about our own sexual health, like in this case, or you know, the history of HIV where science scientists just ignored it because it was only affecting gay men, or just the fact that queer experiences get left out of mostly all of social science. In this long tradition, there are not very many studies about the long-term effects of poppers. And we need more research on this because it can be very dangerous because people are actually using these drugs with increasing popularity. And now there might be studies on it because the straights are coming for it. Thank you, straights. Whenever you swoop in, the scientists seem to listen. Ding. 
So too high a concentration of nitrites in the bloodstream can cause a fatal condition where hemoglobin in red blood cells is unable to carry oxygen to the rest of the body, including the brain, leading to brain failure. This is why it's very dangerous to combine vasodilators like Viagra and Cialis with poppers. And these are all drugs that people are using during sex. So I think the likelihood of them happening together is increased and that freaks me out. Drinking poppers is also extremely dangerous. And when it touches your skin, it can burn and cause a rash, which makes makes me just think from like a biochemical perspective that sniffing the stuff can't be good. I personally would appreciate a lot more studies on this as we are now seeing surveys, including one done in Toronto, that this is becoming a very culturally popular drug to do. On top of that, these are sold mostly as air fresheners, VHS cleaner, like do people use VHSs anymore? Like, come on. And legalizing it is important because unregulated poppers can be extremely dangerous. And it is a very contested issue in queer sex. With all aspects of sex, it's very important that we speak openly and proudly about it. And sex, life, you know, they're intertwined. They're very important. I don't know what this is, but it's kind of a little bit sexy. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next week for a new video. Peace.